Hello, how are you? Back once again um, this Sunday. Um, hope everybody is enjoying this beautiful weather that we're having here. Um, it's only a bit of water, I suppose, really. Anyway, <clears throat> as I'm waiting for people to come online, um, I think my slot is at one o'clock. And I'd just like to welcome you all to this lovely lovely day of meditations and lovely day of talks and everything brought to us by this um, mind body and spirit event it's a great opportunity to to meet people like me and to see all of the things that we do on an event like this and i just i'm delighted that i can be part of it so my talk today is going to be about how you know your psychic and how to determine what your psychic abilities are. So good morning Patrice. Hello Noreen, how are you? And um, I'm really just taking the time to allow that people start to come on. Sorry, I just want to remove something there. Yes, to let people come on board. Um, I know there's a lot of talks to listen to and I just really and truly um, want to welcome you and that's it so let me see we all on some level are psychic good morning Karen or hello Karen I, I keep forgetting hello Lorraine hello Tracy I'm delighted you're here um as people roll over their names pop up and some of them um I see and some I don't see but you're all very welcome so we talk about our psychic ability and in reality, every one of us is psychic. You know, you know, for example, you get a great gut feeling about something. You would perhaps um, feel somebody as they walk quite close to you, that they're stepping into your aura and all of this kind of thing. Hello, Eve. How are you? So we block our abilities and we block our abilities because, first of all, we think, well, we can't say we're psychic because people say, oh, well, you're a big headed person or you're feeling foolish. We might not want to be different. We might be, our heads might be filled with so much of our word stuff that it, um, it blocks us. Sometimes we're afraid to speak out. Sometimes we feel we don't want to meditate. We've no time to meditate. Meditation is boring. We feel unworthy. Maybe we're our lives, we're living a too busy a life on purpose. I find I make myself busy and I make it in every way. Not that I'm busy now cleaning the tops of my cooker or cleaning anything like that, but I make myself busy in all sorts of other ways. And also from our childhood, you know, you were told not to be fanciful, not to be kind of airy fairy and that kind of thing. But there are a number of indicators that we are psychic and I thought I'd share them with you now so let's see I have them written down here and it's amazing that people that I do this with get so many of these questions that they're ticking the yes 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 thing to so in your own head just keep an eye on what I'm saying so is there a situation where you walk into a room and you feel a sensation of lightness or heaviness? Um, do you get overwhelmed in large crowds or places where, where violent acts maybe have occurred? One of the big things I've been feeling at the moment, and especially during the early days of COVID, when I was out, I felt challenged because everybody was a little bit afraid. I don't feel it so now, but at the time it was. Do you describe places as being too heavy? too light or do you get strong gut impressions about people that are usually right you can see other people's point of view or perspective you're inclined to say I feel rather than say you know I know or I see or whatever you get goosebumps and tingling you have deja vu you can feel when somebody's lying you can experience sudden changes of mood or emotion or well-being 
and you feel a lot of emotions in your heart and in your body not just you know feeling it as an emotional thing you feel it deep into you you can feel the presence of somebody from another world either an angel or a spirit and you can feel others physical or emotional pain so now these are all the different ways that we know that we're feeling outside of our normal five senses. Our no, you know, our normal senses are seeing, hearing, smelling, um, I can't think of them now, touch. I can't think of the five senses now, see, hear, no. Anyway, I can't think of them and because our mind's in this kind of thing. But if you look at it, if you have, um, if you have vivid dreams, for example, if you see auras, if you can visualize or daydream easily, appreciate beautiful things, even had imaginary friends as children, or see flashing colors and twinkling lights, that's your clairvoyance, that's your psychic sight. Rather than seeing with your, with your normal eyes, you're seeing on a psychic level. So are you clairaudient? Clairaudient is your psychic hearing. So have you a ringing in your ears, sometimes a little bit of crackling as if a radio was going out of frequency. And that happened to me when I was starting my clear audiences coming in. Um, do you lie down to sleep and start to hear voices? Um, do you actually hear maybe have an impression somebody called me and there's no one there? Or are you very sensitive to sound in busy, loud places? That's your clear, clear audience. So. Clairvoyance is the clear seeing, clear audience is the clear hearing. Now, your gut instinct, and this is clear cognizance. Are you clear cognizant? And this is that you have an inner knowing when things, a sense of inner knowing, even though things seem okay. You know that sense of foreboding you might have and say, God, I know everything's grand, but there's something going to happen. You can tell when somebody's lying, going into your gut. You get sudden insights into the future. And into outcomes you often get truly inspired ideas if you lose something and you sit and just think you just know where it is you can answer questions in a second kind of off the top of your head random questions and you know you're most correct you're able to do things you're not trained for so for example um you might think i'll I'll cover that chair and the next thing you have a stapler and you're doing it but you haven't physically been trained for it but it's like you have this inner knowing on how to do things you like logic and order you love knowledge and you kind of have a feeling what people are going to say next this is and it's also this is part of the deja vu thing you know that thing that you come around the corner and you say i've been here before that's your clear cognizance cognizance sorry now, people think, well, I have all of this thing. I have a great gut instinct. The next thing you might want to think of, have you, are you clear gust, are, are you, have you got clear gustinance, which is a heightened sense of taste? Feeling a taste in your mouth when you're not eating or tastes bring you back in time. Now, I would use this quite a bit of work as in a mediumship thing. I might be made aware of somebody coming through from the spirit world who perhaps um, maybe had problems with how things tasted. A metallic taste might denote to me that they maybe had something like um, chemotherapy or that kind of thing before they died. But lots of different tastes. Now, have you a strong sense of smell? You get a smell drifting in and around you when the people, when, the, when there's no reason to do this. Or you can smell bring back clear memories of situations and people in your life. That's your clear olifants. And this, or yes, clear olifants. So this would be very, very important again when I'd be working as a medium because smells will be very evocative. I might smell scent, uh, um, tobacco. I might just smell flowers, whatever it is. But on all of the senses, they're all rocking up to give me a clear and definite picture of what the person or who the person is that's coming to speak with me. Pardon me. <coughs> and the last one, uh, I suppose the one that's most common is the clairsentience. Now clairsentience is a psychic touch. So a lot of people who do Reiki 
or any kind of hands-on healing develop huge gifts of clairsentience. And one of them is that you might, if I was talking to somebody, I might get a feeling in my body of what they're experiencing. If you touch them, you might feel their aches and pains. You could feel their emotions. You could feel anything's wrong with them. You can even feel how strong their life force is. And initially, as I was working as a healer doing Reiki and then kinesiology, a person would contact me. And as they were on the phone, I would feel it's their back, it's their shoulder, it's their knee, it's their tummy, whatever it is. But these are all your psychic gifts. They can be expanded upon. They can be worked on. And as part of my classwork, I would expect people to work on each of their gifts to bring them up to a level. And the level of um, the level that you would achieve is one of the main reasons that you would be very, very accurate in what you're saying and what you're thinking and what you're feeling. We actually do a lovely thing in one of the classes where we simply touch up along with the person's spine. Our hands are about that much apart from the spine, starting at the base of the spine, spine and we actually read up along and starting down at your tailbone, which is around the time of your birth, coming up to your waist, which is when you're four or five, then up another bit as you're coming into your teenage years, up another bit into your adulthood, but all down along the energy in that spine can actually give you clear insight into that person's life. And it's an uncanny thing to do. And actually while we're doing it, we, um, if you came to an area where there was a lot of distress, you would actually perhaps put a bit of healing into that area, go back and do that. But it's an amazing thing to do, just read somebody just by their spine. And as you get more into this, you only have to look at the person and you'll be able to see on their body where they have scars, where they've had operations. You might notice anything about them, but it, it's giving you that clear picture because you're trusting that your psychic gifts are to the fore rather than your physical eyes. So now, how do we enhance it? Well, we can use affirmations. We can use crystals. You can use oils different things um, we um, we can get out of our own head sometimes our heads analyze things too much so it is important that we strip away a lot of the armor and a lot of the stuff that we have been pre-programmed to use and to be as children so you dig deep into yourself you let go of the fear of not being good enough or that you're not losing the plot completely because we were all good enough and people ask me you know how why would you want to do readings why do you want to do this and the 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 object of a reading is number one that when somebody sits in front of you that they have been receiving recognition of all that they've gone through in the past and there's nothing like someone saying to you you know I see you've been through a hard time. Then you bring them hope, you bring them love, you bring them positivity. These are all the emotions that are coming through you from both the angel and the spirit world or from your higher power. So it's a, it's a lovely thing when you're having a reading that you come away as if you spent time with the angels, you're uplifted, you're happy. But by using the psychic senses, and we all have them, you know yourself, you've spoken to a friend and you've come away from that chat feeling better about yourself. And that's all that we hope to achieve with the readings as well. So one of the things, or several of the things I suggest is you, you start to tune into the higher self that you are. So do something spiritual on a daily basis. You might meditate. You might play with your angel cards if you have them, your tarot cards if you have them. Use your crystals and even just picking a crystal, going through the crystals. Like everyone, we all have crystals around our houses. You know, we can't stop. We like shiny, oh pardon, we like shiny things, us women and some of us men. So you go around and you pick a crystal that resonates with you and sit with it for a second. Feel the energy of it or pop it into your pocket or if it's small enough into your bra, wherever you like to hold your crystals. I remember going for a massage one time and 
I took off my underwear and there was, whew, I must have had been having a bad day, but there were three or four crystals. It was like a shower of crystals. Hello, Bridget. Hello, Deirdre. How are you getting on? So, you meditate, use your crystals, um, maybe use some essential oils, anything to lift you, something like frankincense, anything like that. But, or write something. Now, I write daily pages and Julie Cameron, I went to see Julie Cameron some time ago and she's the author of The Artist's Way and she advocates that you write daily pages every day and it's amazing the way your higher self starts to work through you as you write your pages. Now I know you're thinking well I'd never get out of the house if I had to do all this but this is important. You would get up half an hour early if you to go somewhere. Why not give yourself that first half hour of your day just for you? So do something spiritual, burn some nice incense, frankincense, rose, mirror, lavender. Maybe there's loads of sound baths and stuff like that on YouTube. Listen to a little sound bath. You can use a tuning fork on your chakras. You could clear your energy by doing a little chakra meditation. And as I say, if you feel particularly vulnerable, and you feel that you're a bit knocked about and, and clumsy or whatever and ungrounded, wearing maybe a necklace with hematite or anything like that, a, a grounding stone on it would help. And then speak in a positive way. So release the negativity. From the time we turn on our TV or radio in the morning, we're getting negativity. We're hearing bad news because good news is no news. So... That is negativity coming at us in every quarter. And it's like me saying when I came on about the weather today. Okay, it's raining here, but it's only water. And it does mean I'm not going to have to water my garden this evening. It does mean I don't have to go for a walk, thank God. And all those other things. So it's like you look at a positive aspect of every negative situation. But as I say, I find... A little meditation will set me up for the day. Now, there are hundreds and thousands of people doing meditations on YouTube. Tons. And if you can decide if you want a two minute, a five minute, an hour or whatever. But what I find is that I do when just to let my chakras get into balance so that as I'm walking through life, I'm walking through it lightly and easily and feeling very grounded and very good in myself. So if you'd like, I can share with you my meditation that I do for my chakras. Um, it's only a slight one. Now I am doing a huge big chakra class on Zoom, but this will be a very in-depth thing starting in September. It will be over seven weeks. And during the seven weeks, we'll be working deeply on the emotions, the negativities, the blockages and everything that we each have and show within our different chakras. It's a life changing course. And anyone that would choose to come on this course would want to be ready to make changes in their life. Excuse me. So, but that anyway, I say I will be advertising it. It's coming on in September. And it is, it is a very, very deep emotional release and clean and cleanse. And I'm so excited about doing it. But for now, if anybody is interested and you'd like to clear your chakras in a nice quick fashion, and then I can do my angel card questions, if you'd like to just settle yourself and get yourself comfortable. Is that all right? So now, I just close the door. Just tell people, just give me five minutes because that's all this is going to take, literally five minutes. And that's all you need. So when you're ready, I'd like you, first of all, to concentrate on your breath. I'll just turn up my music a little bit. Sorry. Get yourself somewhere nice and comfortable to sit. And just gently close your eyes and concentrate on your breath. And allow your mind to settle so the thoughts float like little white clouds just across the sky. 
So a couple of nice deep breaths, deep cleansing breaths from the inside of your body and releasing and letting go. So now, breathing in and releasing. Breathing in and releasing. And I'd like you to imagine that you have lovely red roots growing down from the soles of your feet into the earth. And as these roots go down, they're going down through where you're sitting, through the floor, down into the foundations of the building, down into the stone, and your roots come to a cave. And in this cave, there is the brightest, beautiful crystal you could imagine. Whatever color you feel you need and see your roots wrap around this crystal and then go straight down from this crystal down deep into the earth again until they come to the center of the earth where the molten lava is. And as your roots touch this molten lava, feel the energy of this lava as it comes straight flying back up these roots. And when it gets to the crystal, the intensity of it shatters the crystal and the crystal is absorbed into the roots, coming straight back up and feel it coming right into your root chakra at the base of the spine. Feeling this red root chakra as it becomes grounded, letting go clearing out any any issues you may have about your your finances your home your stability feel this filled with this beautiful red red root and red light and now coming up to your sacral chakra which is underneath your belly button and this is a beautiful orange color and as this orange color grows and expands it enhances your self your sense of self of who you are and what you mean to yourself, not necessarily anybody else. And now coming up to your solar plexus, which is over your belly button. And this is where your clear sentience lies. This is the beautiful yellow, bright yellow, fizzy color. This is your clear feeling and see as it expands into this area that your sense of feeling on both a normal and a psychic level grows and expands see it clearing out any emotional debris that might be there and see it coming alive and now up into your green heart chakra and this is bringing in the universal love and light into your soul so see this green color and feel as you hold on to this all the areas in your life where you have complete love either for the people in your family or for the people coming towards you, anything, just expand this wonderful green feeling of love and light and the power of your soul and see this connected to your soul center. See how radiant your soul center is as the energy revolves around it, filling your heart, filling your heart with the love the universal love, the love of God, the love of the angels and the love of those who have passed. And now coming up into your throat and see this beautiful blue light into your throat. See it opening up your vocal cords, allowing you to do clear speaking, allowing you to be able to say what's in your mind and know what not to say, able to give talk on a guided level that the words and the sentences coming through you are able to be expressed and now coming up to the sides of your to your chakra your ear chakras which are a, a purpley browny color they're at the sides of your head near your eyes and see that your psychic hearing is coming in see your ear chakras expand and throb and now coming to your own two eyes and to your third eye, see this beautiful um, indigo colour and see your own eyesight enhanced so that you can see on both the psychic level and also have clear vision around things in your own life. 
So feel your third eye as it opens gently. And now we're coming up to your crown chakra and see this beautiful violet light. This is the area of clear cognizance. This is the clear knowing channel. See this violet light as it reaches out, reaches out through the top of your head and reaches out to the higher self in a silver beam of light. And as you sit there, connected to the earth and connected to the other worlds, feel all your chakras being attuned to whatever level you need that attunement today. Feel the attunement as it runs up and down your body, up and down, tuning in all of the energies that you need to live in your life, all of the stuff that you need to know. And now, in your own space, take a nice deep breath. And as you do, feel that there is a bubble around your body, a bubble of protection, and that it's enclosing you and enclosing these beautiful lights as they dim slightly, but stay alive. So see yourself as a being of light and feeling of positivity and love as today carries on. And now when you're ready, if you'd like to take a few deep breaths, we can come back in and we can do a little bit of talking if you don't mind. Now, so going forward, I have a couple of... Um, events coming up if anybody's interested. I'm going to Dingle on the 15th and 16th of August to do a psychic development course plus um, some readings. I am doing um, a lovely angel day which is bringing everybody together to work in the angelic energy, play some cards, play with your crystals, get to meet your angels, all of that. That's in Port Leash on the 23rd. I'm also doing a, a, an, an angel and tarot course on Zoom starting in September. And then towards the middle of September, I'm starting this life changing chakra course. So lots and lots and lots and lots of busyness at the moment, which I absolutely love. Um, as you all know, I take appointments for readings in Kildare and online and different places. But now we did, and I did promise that I'd do a few questions. So if anybody has a question, and kind of a specific question, rather than a very, um, I think I'll use my Archangel Michael cards today. And um, if you have a question, I'd be absolutely delighted to ask the angels on your behalf for a little bit of guidance. I actually had a question already. And the question I have is, my boyfriend of three years has asked for a break. And are we finished? Oh, God, would you hate that? Anyway, so I'm going to ask Archangel Michael, is this girl and her boyfriend actually finished? Now, let's see what they're saying. Now, what I'm looking at is that it is kind of... As if you've been spending nearly too much time together. Now, I don't think he's finished, but I think that this is valuable time for both of you to decide if you really want each other. My gut feeling on this, my clear cognizance on this is all about that he won't want, um, you know, a long breakup and he'll be the one coming to you looking to start back again. So, um... It's no harm to have a little break and to get a perspective on things. So don't be distressed about this. I feel it is only a little breather after all the tightness and on top of each other that people have had over the COVID. So no problem with that. Now, Josephine is looking about issues with her daughter. Any help from the angels, please? Let's tune into your daughter here, Josephine. Now, what I'm being told is, um, 
you've done all you can with your daughter Josephine it's it's you've helped her as much as you can and it's now time for her to carry the the can for her own um for her own own choices she um there's a breakthrough coming i'm very aware of a breakthrough coming in her life and i'm very aware that after this breakthrough things are going to improve dramatically and very very quickly so um it's a good card but i do see the breakthrough and i do see that she needs to be true to herself rather than doing what everyone else is advising her so maybe stand back with the advice and let her make the decision because in the end she's only going to do what she wants to do herself Katie wants to know, is she going to go back to work in the same place? Let's see, Katie. This is a quick one. Katie. Oh, now, this card is about cutting your cords. Is that place that you're meant to be? It's about cutting your cords. It's about you stepping into your own power. It's also about the fact that prior to things closing down, it was... Um, Prior to things closing down, you weren't that delighted with it. So I would kind of be not feeling a huge sense of loyalty there. I don't think they're very loyal to you. Now, Tracy Furl, I cannot believe that you're actually asking me a question. But here, what's your mother saying, Tracy, on this? And I'm not doing a card because I'm doing your mother. What your mother's saying is that you've always walked your own path. And you be true to yourself on Thursday. Be totally true to yourself. Offer no explanations. Be totally true to what you, in your heart of hearts, believe in. She is saying that you have the truest heart. It's like it's like um, a crystal heart you have, Tracy. And she's saying that you be true to your beliefs. Don't try and sugarcoat it. Don't say very little at the start. Let them put their cards on the table, whatever it is. And then you then say with great dignity, I will have to consider this so that you can go home. Don't be forced into a quick decisions there and then. Don't be bullied into something because other people might want it or whatever. It is about, um, it's about you being true to yourself. But you need to discuss situations with your husband and then whatever you both decide is the best thing for Tracy and your family is the thing you'll do. But she's saying, you always lead from the front. She's so proud of you. She just loves the bones of you, Tracy. And she, there, and it's like she's saying in the spirit world, that's my girl, that's my girl, that's my girl. Just like you do when your lads score a goal or your little one does something, that's my child. Well, that's what she's doing with you all the time. But she's saying, going over it again, sit and listen, go into your gut on it and don't be forced to make decisions if you don't feel like making them there and then, but be true to yourself. Okay, now let's see another question. Now I have another one here that somebody sent to me because I'm kind of, see the roll up and then I can't see them. So you need to really put them up again. I've, a, I've done a lot of Reiki courses, holistic courses, Reiki, IET, bioenergy, but can't seem to have the confidence to get started. And this is, oh, Marie. Marie has done a lot of courses. Now, let's see about Marie. What's the situation with you, Marie? Marie, what they're saying is, um, first of all, you're asking Archangel Michael to move you forward. And second of all, the thing that makes you so edgy about this is the business aspect. You're a wonderful therapist. It is just the business aspect. And the business aspect of this is that you need to do maybe a little small start your own business course or something. So you're confident in that aspect of it. That's the big thing that you need. Maybe that's the course you need so that you know about tax and know about your implications and then you'll be ready to move forward. But as for doing more courses, you're very good at what you do. It's only the business aspect. And I would definitely see that come February, March of next year that you're set up yourself. Now, Michelle, a quick question. Will I get the job doing what I want to do, Michelle? Um, 
definitely there's a lot of energy behind this and it's also about asking and the funny thing i don't often do this but asking our lady to help you with this but you will get the job how soon you get it will mean how much energy you put into it now let's see noreen noreen your mother oh do you know Noreen? you look so like her she's saying Noreen's mother's in spirit and she's just come to say that um, she's laughing because she's saying as a child you always scribbled and drew and you were always messing around with bits of drawings on the backs of your school copies and all of this and she's saying that the pictures that you're doing Noreen are actually channeled pictures that the art you're doing but you're not giving yourself enough time to do it that the art you're doing is is not as um it should be more because but you're not giving yourself enough time the other thing i have is for you is that she's telling you the people are around you the people are around her so i'm looking at your brother i'm looking at and i'm also looking at aaron for some reason and she's saying that let go of the grief of their passing and embrace the joy of the being of where they are now that their lives are completely and utterly happy but she's also saying that you need to sit with people and give them spirit messages as you're drawing their spirit person and stop being afraid of this um you've changed so many lives so it is time to get back into doing the work of the spirit and don't try and bring everyone else with you just do especially for yourself but she's saying you need to set aside your time and see people and do their art as you're talking to them um i feel your father's there as well there's a lot of people in your family who are on the spirit side of this world and she just wants you to know that they're happy and that they're watching out for you but um she's saying stop worrying everything's okay now Jenny, a family wedding. Yes, Jenny, and it's all about you saying what you want and what you don't want. It's about you being specific about what is making you comfortable and everything else. Um, but I feel in one way it's going to be a bit sad, but in another way I feel it's going to be very comforting for everybody. But it is, it's not a big wedding as none of them are now, but it's about you saying what you want and what makes you happy. But... Um, Huge blessings, Jenny, for you. Huge, huge blessings. And huge blessings from those who have passed. <gasps> Patrice wants to know, should she end a relationship? OMG, as my granddaughter would say. I couldn't be doing that on a one question reading, Patrice. <laughs> now, let's see. Patrice, that would take about a year. To... Oh, no, that, 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 a question like that would be immoral for me to answer on a one card reading I, I even though i'm dying to have a look at the cards i'm not going to um it, it it's too serious a thing so now people i hope you've enjoyed this time spent with me um a card for today for everybody let's see so the card for today is about your positive thoughts and the words that you use around a situation determine the outcome. So if you say, I'm always broke, you will always be broke. If you say, I'm always whatever, it will happen. But the thing about is, sorry, I'll answer your question now in a second. And the thing about this is that your words predict the outcome. So if you focus on the fact, I'm always broke, at this minute, even if you're broke, you still have a bit of money in your purse. You still have food in your press. You still have electricity. You still have a place to live. So you're actually a millionaire compared to the woman in Syria begging for a bowl of rice. Now, so it is about... Gretty, I don't mean to keep skipping you, but sometimes on these things, you need to have a specific question. I hope you don't think I am skipping you. Now, Tracy was asking about the smell of roses and... The smell of roses, in my mind, is the smell of Our Lady. And sometimes a person who's passed 
if they were very prayerful, will extend this smell of roses around you. And I've had it from people. I've had it from my friend in in, in Moat. I sat with them and as we sat together, the room filled with the smell of roses. Aren't you very lucky? It's just a sign that people are around you and protecting you. And if you're going through a particularly dodgy period in your life, it gets stronger. But if you're becoming very aware, it also seems to be more often. Anyway, as I say, I am aware that other people are coming on to do other talks and I don't want to interfere with them. Thank you so much for sitting with me today. And I have a great time. I'd sit here till five o'clock if I didn't have to let other people on. So keep an eye out for my Facebook lives. You know where I am. You know what I'm doing. And I'm very grateful for you spending this time this morning or today. And make sure you listen to all the other wonderful talks that are coming on this afternoon. God bless you all. Take care. Bye.